Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, and together with my co-host of Mark Rohn at Just Day White News Service, jbiztextvalley.com. And now, as you could see, he's the regular columnist for the Jewish Press. And I have a column called Albany Beat, where I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or it doesn't, as the case may be. And uh, speaking of government, we have a very special guest with us today, right. Senator George Amador. Welcome to the Jewish View. Well, great to be with you, Rabbi and Mark. Pleasure. And, uh, George, can we call you George? Oh, please yeah. do. Okay, That's what my, my mother named me. Okay, yeah. so we'll call you that. So, yeah, you know, give me mazel tough for being a senator going That's up right. in the world over here. Thank you. That's Go right. more Thank and more, you. higher and higher. That's right. Maybe Congress someday. Yeah. <laughs> One day at a time. One day at a time. Huh? One office at a time, and right now, senator. So how do you like being in the Senate? I love serving the public and uh, being an elected official, you know, look, it's no question, it's a tough time. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, the trust in the, uh, in, with people and politicians are kind of is broken. Uh, but I'm the type of person, I have uh, an extensive background in the private sector. I'm, a, I'm an employer, I'm a home builder mm -hmm. in the capital region here, so it's a matter of leading by example, building that relationship and that trust and serving uh, the people the best I can. You can serve people better now that you're a Republican in a Republican majority Senate. That must be a little bit of a more of an easier job for you. I don't know, easier, but... As opposed to the assembly where you were in the minority. When I was yeah, in the assembly, same. I was mm -hmm. in the minority conference in the, uh, in the assembly, and being in the majority definitely has its uh, benefits and perks, meaning that... Um, you know, you're sitting around uh, the conference table and when you're talking about negotiating the budget and really meaningful public uh, policy and uh, budgetary issues, the perk is, is that, yeah, you have a say versus when I was in the minority conference in the assembly, they kept saying, George who? George who? <laughs> so it was... Uh, you know, it, it's definitely a little different. It's unfortunate, though, that uh, that happens, majority-minority conferences, uh, only because we still serve the public. And, you know, we're to serve all New Yorkers in the New York State Legislature. Well, in 1994, they said about George Pataki, a former Assemblyman, George who, George who, and then he became governor. So, <laughs> there you, know. you go. <laughs> now, now you got me from congressman to governor. I don't know, Mark. You know. <laughs> He's really building you up over here. Well, he was also a senator, but still it was always George who, and yeah. uh, so you have uh, big shoes that you could follow in. <laughs> well, it really is an honor to, to be able to serve in the capacity of yes. public policy and serve in the New York State Senate. Now, and, your, your and district is huge. I mean, it goes it all the way from Montgomery County all the way down to Ulster County. Correct. It's 140 miles long, to be, mm -hmm. really? to be precise. And, and it's, it's big, uh, all of Montgomery County and parts of Schenectady County and to Albany County, well, down in the Green Albany County. County. In Albany County, we have, uh, the hill we really have the hill towns, town of Gilderland, and then all of the hill towns. Mm -hmm. So the only part that I, I don't serve in the 46th Senate District would be the city of uh, Albany, the town of Bethlehem, and the town of uh, Colony. And everything the city, else. And the city of Cohoes is Neil Breslin, and the and River city District. Of Cahos, yeah. The River District is Neil right. Breslin. So. Yeah. Any of that kind of along the, uh, from Bethlehem right. north, right. Uh, along you the river. You have Queemans? I do have Queemans. Okay. Uh, Queemans, Ravina, Westerlow, Rensselaerville, Rensselaerville, Burn, and Knox, mm -hmm. and Gilderland. Uh, I serve in the 46th. So you're a local. <laughs> Born and raised right here in, uh, right. in the capital region. That's right, because right. right. your father started Amador Homes. He did. So you were born in what, Ellis? In Ellis I, I, I was born at, uh, at Bellevue Maternity. Oh, Bellevue? Oh, yeah. really? Okay. I was born at Bellevue. <laughs> uh, now, you have several committees that you're on, uh, and you chair the uh, alcoholism and drug abuse. Yes. Why were you chosen for that? You don't have an alcoholism or drug abuse problem. You mm -hmm. know, you're not a former addict. So, <laughs> so why um, was that close to you? Why is that something that you wanted to do? This is public service to yeah. me and yeah. for me. And, and that is uh, our civic duty, giving back and being involved in, in uh, our community is very important. And 
It's one of those things that very much excites me. Matter of fact, I, I have three children and they're all older. They're 24, 22, and 19. But my wife and I have raised, raised them up to also be involved in the community. Well, they're in the dangerous age of experimentation. Well, we have had a, uh, a very close-knit family yes. and we are very involved in their lives, well, even though they live outside of the home now. Uh, yeah, but but look, still. You know, even our sher county sheriff, Craig Apple, he's, yeah. he preaches you know, don't drink and drive, and even his son had, a, had an issue with that. So no matter how tight-knit you are, I mean, there's all, you know, that's why I'm know, saying I, it's I, always expensive. You know, that's Senator, they say in, we're in the Jewish we you have to have a mazel. Right. It really is, to raise up children. It takes, you know, you, can do, you have to do what you have to do, of so, course. You can't just let them grow like a weed. No. But on the other hand, it does take a... I, I, love the, I love the teachings, the Jewish teachings, um, mm -hmm. Honest, that are that are in the Old Testament in the Torah of of even raising the family and and keeping the traditions of culture and uh, and who we are as people and and lining them up with what God has given us a structure a moral compass and structure in society and that's I think what's going on today's day and age is we kind of are leaving that moral compass and it's becoming more of a lawless society or a godless society, which it's unfortunate and I think we need more God, more faith in that structure where it goes back to why I chair the, the alcoholism substance abuse. Mm -hmm. These are individuals who are very much struggling with an addiction, a mental illness, uh, kind of that stronghold on their life and they need help. Um, and it's part of what I believe our message on helping out each other, uh, being very effective in serving in the legislature is how I can help out the most needy. So whether it is someone with mental illness, developmentally disabled individual, or someone who is battling or struggling with an addiction, mm -hmm. heroinism is on the rise. Heroin addiction, mm -hmm. opiate uh, addiction is on the rise. Right. And, and you, it's and not only is it on the rise, but it's killing our people. And you're co-chair of the Heroin Task Force. I am, I'm yeah. a co-chair of the Heroin Task Force. Right. And when you see the numbers escalating as high and rapidly as they're doing, look, we all realize yeah, that uh, maybe we had a problem in the 1970s with heroin, right? You became a junkie. Today, well, you read about it in your history books. You didn't. No, no, I was alive. I'm, I'm old yeah, enough to believe. You didn't live through it. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm old enough to live through uh, when all of our great vets came home from Vietnam yeah. War uh, and did not receive the respect that they are due and owed even to this day. Um, I, I saw it at all. I saw it all. Okay. I, I did. Um, I well, may have been a little guy, yeah. but you know, when I was five and six and seven years old. Uh, made big impacts in my life with that as well. So uh, again, this committee allows me to be engaged with giving some helping mm -hmm. hand, making sure that uh, Oasis and the, uh, the appropriate agencies and the, and the uh, I think the, the treatment providers mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. recovery providers and how we can put forth some good public policy to help our most vulnerable in society Mm -hmm. have a leg up or okay. get some help and, and um, make sure funding is available. Now, let me ask you, uh, last session, your committee, from what I gathered, met twice, on March 17th and May 12th. I mean, is there a reason why you didn't meet more often? Or? Well, it was a matter of number of bills. Right. And, uh, you know, on the calendar of each of those committees, we took up a, a bundle of, of bills individually. Well, I got to um, tell you, March 17th, isn't that St. Patrick's Day? Well, and I then you had an alcoholism meeting on St. Patrick's Day. We're trying to <laughs> we're trying to put a statement out there. And I kind of looked at <laughs> this that. It's very important. And I kind of looked at that, and I'm like, couldn't you wait like a week? <laughs> you know, those basically come based on what the calendar and the schedule is, and you know, important legislation and bills that you can't make this stuff up. You, just, you can't. No, I it's mean, just, it, it's I, I sometimes say that this is in Albany. Yes. I sometimes say that this is the land of Oz. That's right. It's not reality in some cases. They think that they're in their own stratosphere of uh, what society or what the world looks like, and it's, it's not real life. Well, that's why I always say, I say, you know, it's good that you're uh, 
you know, uh, just not a born politician, that you're actually a businessman. You know, yeah. you would see the difference between people that pie in the sky or theoretically this way government works, and you know what a real person who's real with a real business, who's really working, what a real family has to deal with. So it's not just theoretically pie in the sky and everything should be good. Well, I believe in a citizen legislature, and I think it's very healthy. And a quality of, uh, of an elected official is one that understands both dynamics mm -hmm. of society. The, priv the private sector, the public sector, the going to work, whether it's out in the field or in their office or whether it's in a hospital or whether it's, you know, adjudicating at, at, mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in a courtroom somehow, uh, some way. It, it's very important to have a wide spectrum of, of experience and mm -hmm. understanding of real life circumstances. That's right. Then also bringing it, you know, the six months that we are in the legislature to Albany and then deal with the aspect of the budget because that's really our primary purpose of the legislature is to manage mm -hmm. uh, the budget process and make sure the various districts and the constituents and the organizations and the operations of the state is operating uh, and being funded appropriately and and we are taking care of our citizens so uh, you know the, to have that experience and my understanding I understand what it means to not just make the payroll check not to just receive the payroll check no. but to make that sign, check happen be the signator on to the check. sign the front of that check right. to make sure there's enough money in the account to Right. fund that check right. and then pay for all the burdens that is associated with that check. The unemployment insurance, the workers' comp insurance, the, the fringe benefits that mm -hmm. you give and, and that you offer to your employees, that comes at a cost. Right. And then all of the other regulatory burdens that government puts on the employer. I understand it firsthand because every single week I face it. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. We all love New York. It's just that we can't afford New York in many ways. And there's a lot of people in our society, in our communities, that just say, George, you know, I grew, I, I was born and raised here in New York. I want to stay in New York. I mm -hmm. want to retire in New York. I want to have a future for my children and my grandchildren here in New York. But we see in upstate a brain drain a lot of times uh, with our young people. So are your children staying in New York? Uh, I have two that came back. My three children went out of state to college. I have my youngest in college right now. She's studying to be a nurse. She made it into a four-year nursing program That's down great. in Virginia. So that she's going to come back? I hope. Okay. I hope and pray to God okay. that, yes, she will come back. Okay. You know, it's a shame that you say brain drain because just right here in the Capital District, which we know so well, there's so many universities, and there's, there's IRPI, and there's SUNY, and the Nanotech now, and that union just can go on and on. And um, there's so much to offer in New York. It's so there beautiful. Is. I have people who came even for Israel, and they just say, you're crazy. He says, you know what the water, people are dying for water like in Israel or in, even in California. You have such resources. It's mm -hmm. so beautiful here. Why wouldn't anybody want to live here? But I mean, I know it's economics. You can't just live here. You have to have a job. You got to have a job. Can't, you got to make some money, and you can't just sit here and vegetate. And Rabbi, I believe that the economy is getting a little bit better. Uh, you know, I think we're very fortunate in the capital region area that uh, uh, unlike some other parts of, uh, of New York State, we are seeing, you know, some small incrementals in growth in, on, a, on a chart. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, I'm in the housing industry, in the housing market. Uh, you know, I'm building. I'm employing people. Mm -hmm. I have literally hundreds of different people working right now putting together our various projects and building the structures that we need to build. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But the only reason why that's happening is because there's some stability in the marketplace well. and a decent economy here in the capital region. And I pay tribute to a lot of what the government had, had uh, made investments with Nano uh, and, and, and Global Foundries. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the private sector making just, significant but investment. But you're just not building, and then the buildings aren't vacant. They're being filled. Correct. So th that's an important part Correct. of it. The only reason that you continue building is because 
you're filling up the edifices or the adult, uh, abodes that you uh, build. Yes. So there you go. I mean, so people are migrating. People yeah. are circulating around the, at the capital region. But we are blessed okay. and fortunate to have the institutions, the higher ed institutions that we have in the, uh, the work. I wanted to mention something else because I didn't want to make it seem like you were just chair of a committee and then you just met twice. You're, I mean, you're certainly no slacker. You're on the Banks Committee with your fellow yes. Senator Hugh Farley, yes. who chairs it. Uh, consumer Protection, Corporations, Authorities, and Commissions. Yes. Elections. Well, you probably want to be on elections after what happened to you in the past election. <laughs> uh, judiciary, mm -hmm. uh, Social Services, mm -hmm. Veterans, and Homeland Security and Military Affairs. Yeah. And then you're co-chair with two other senators of the Heroin Task Force, and you're on the task force on Lyme and tick-borne diseases. And I, I co-chair the Workforce Development Task Force It as well. seems like you have n no time except to just be sitting in meetings and whether or in committee hearings, and, and then that's it. <laughs> uh, I actually have, uh, look you know, at I'm a disciplined individual. I'm yeah. goal-oriented. Goal and um, I mean, time management must be critical it, for you. It's big. But look, my father always taught me early on in, in my career, you better learn how to multitask. Mm -hmm. You better know how to learn how to juggle. Now, I physically can't juggle balls. I could, I could get there, yeah. but as far as being multitask and, and being able to juggle two different uh, aspects of, of, uh, yeah. of my career, um, it can be done. I have fabulous staff. You do. And, yes. you know, I'm very fortunate and blessed have, to have that. I have to ask you about judiciary. Yeah. Because that's the committee where the Court of Appeals judges come through. Mm -hmm. First blush before they go on to other, two other committees maybe. Um, who do you, what do you see happening at the Court of Appeals? I mean, all of a sudden, what, Susan Reed's not, is stepped down and, and then the chief judge is going to, I mean, is, is up for forced retirement. Yeah. Yeah. So. T tell me your insight as to either who's going to be, I mean, the governor has to nominate. Yes. So t tell me who you see as the lead or how you see the court being balanced. And Well, Mark, I think that that is the most, you just hit the nail on the head. The most important aspect of what's going on in the courts is making sure that as we see a shift and a changeover, um, I think uh, Judge Chief Judge Lipton, served New York State well, uh, did an outstanding job. You would hate to see him go, but yet it's time, and everyone has a time. Yeah, Judith Kay had her time. Uh, Judith Kay had her time. And uh, J Judge Lippman got raises for his people, so I yeah, guess so that, was his, that was his major goal yeah. as being chief judge. He wanted the raises. He wanted it when Judith Kay was chief judge and he was her administrator. I mean, chief administrator. So. I mean, that was, he was so focused and, and obsessed with getting raises for judges. Well, at that yeah. time, they hadn't had raises in so what? You uh, haven't uh, 10, 12, 16 or so years. Look, at, as far as me as you a legislator I, I, getting a raise, we don't need a raise. Yeah, but, the, and, and they, and I'll tell you something, these judges don't need a raise either because they're earning over 100000 I said this to Judith Kay, and I said this to Judge Lippman, if you can't manage your household, on six-figure salary, when you have people working for you who are earning less than that, then something is a, a wrong. Something's not right here, and you have to figure it out for your own sake mm -hmm. because you know what the salary is going in. And if you don't want to be on the court of appeals, and you don't think it's a high honor, and you don't think it's a privilege, and you think it's all about the money, then you shouldn't be doing this. And well, I said that to him, and he just and I remember you know, the other you. reporters were just like. <gasps> You spoke to the chief judge that way? You spoke to Judith Kay that way? I said, yeah, because mm -hmm. that's how I feel. And I just want them to know that they should be barking up the wrong tree because it's not just the chief judges that get, or the judges in the Court of Appeals that get raises. The Supreme Court judges get raises. Yeah, everyone. The criminal court judges get raises. I mean, it, it really goes all the way down to, the, to every court level. Get, mm -hmm. They all get raises, and it's a lot of money. So the, the importance of it. Yeah is making sure we have the balance in the and yes. as the as the governor will send up his appointments to the senate for confirmation right. in the judiciary committee we evaluate we do interviews we we've 
we mm -hmm. talk to the various candidates and uh, and then they go through the confirmation right. process so uh, I think the the shape up of how or the shape and, and how the whole bench will look uh, as time progresses here is important that the governor selects um, and a very nonpartisan because it's supposed to be based on experience and the districts that they've represented and served uh, and the and and their their uh, the backgrounds of the individuals right not the that, party affiliation not the party affiliation and and I think that that is very very important we need to keep the integrity of of our system intact and and uh, and making sure that our our justices are doing their job, but also not legislating, but just really going through the process that they are adjudicating uh, based on you know their statutes. Well, you were a you were a teenager when Mario Cuomo was governor, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he certainly looked at this. Uh, Believe it or not, I was just starting off in business with my father when he was the governor. Well, the, and I was really I, in some cases I was frustrated. <laughs> And you probably didn't pay attention to the Court of Appeals, but his father appointed Republicans. His father appointed people who were not enrolled. I mean, his father chose people based for the high court based on their experience and not their party affiliation, and which bummed out a lot of Democrats. But still, but it's the right thing. To that's do. the right thing to do. Right. So thing you're to saying do. that this governor should take a page out of his father's book. I, in that respect, absolutely. In that respect. I, 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 well, I, listen, my, I, okay. as I was starting off in business, in the home building business, yeah. there was one thing that um, his dad yeah. uh, did that was very irritating to me as a home builder, and that was he imposed a condo tax uh -huh. on any condominium that was being built or sold in the state of New York. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Frustrating because it was another tax on top of the tax on top of a tax okay. that uh, consumers ended up having to pay, and it really, when when the housing market was going through difficult times, and the governor of New York State was imposing more taxes uh, on that industry, uh, it it kind of like yeah. takes your heart out a little bit. So did that, but we don't that have that repeal? anymore. Okay. Yes, we repeal. don't have it anymore in the state of New York. Okay. It's a good thing. They knew you were coming. No, it has nothing they to do with me. They knew they were going to get I rid think of that they finally you. understood that, you know, <laughs> this is not the wisest thing to do was hurting business. Okay. So which of these other committees, if you had your druthers, do you want to keep and do you want to have so many committees? Well, look, I think that One, two, in, in my background... Five, um, six, seven, eight committees and then the... Eight, and the three nine, task force. Nine and then the three task forces. Yeah. I mean... It's a lot. Um, Do you want? Don't you want to downsize a little on that? I'm young. I know you are. I'm energetic, I and, I, and I'm and I'm and I'm ready aren't to serve. Aren't you one of the younger members in the state senate? Mm, no. No. The, I mean, you're in the top five, aren't you? I'm 46 years old. Yeah. So I don't think I'm in the top five. There's, uh, you know, there was the okay. new, the new, uh, the newbies, the yeah. the, the <laughs> new class. There yeah. was 10 new members that was voted mm -hmm. into uh, the in 2015's right. election or 14's election, right. and um, of that, seven of them serve in the Republican majority conference, of which I am probably of of the seven. I think I am the third oldest of the seven okay. in that. And then there was some other young, younger a lot of young members. You know our good friend Simcha Felder. Uh, Love yeah. Simcha. He's, he's my buddy. Really? Yes. You know, I didn't re he's, I, I got to call him. <laughs> I got to call him the professor. <laughs> he's a professor. I don't even know that myself. He's been on the Jewish View two times, and we didn't even yeah, know that. Yeah, he was a professor, and I've spoken to some of his uh, students. And when they started calling him professor, I said, what do you mean? <laughs> but, you know, Simka and I have a, uh, a great relationship. We, are, mm -hmm. we um, see um, a lot of things in common. We have, uh, we have prayed together. Mm -hmm. we, have, uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have talked about various, uh, you know, scriptures and various, um, various ways of, and things and thinking of life that, uh, is important to both of us, and and I think to our our, our healthy community and society. 
That's good, excellent. I know he works together. He's a Democrat, but he works together with the Republicans. And he, he conferences with us. And, you know, again, I'm, I'm the type of person that, as a business person and as a, a, an everyday normal citizen, uh, this, whole this, this whole party divide, divide or yeah. partisan, partisanism, Right. If there's such a word. Yes, there is now. Is, is <laughs> you know, has to stop. It has to stop in America. It has to stop in New York State. We are the United States of America so citizens. So then why do, you, why do the Senate Republicans treat the Senate Democratic Conference the way they do? And treat them in which way? As a minority member stuff. or conference? Yeah, I mean, the petty well, stuff I, that I, goes on. You can't, you can't speak now. You know, we're moving on. You know, you I don't know. Most of the people who debate on these bills, they have very little time in the, in the state Senate. Uh, they have very little time constraints. They do most of the speaking. And there was quite a few bills that yeah, but the majority the conference occasion. allowed yeah. the minority conference members to bring up and, and pass. But you know there were some discussions, loud discussions on the floor of the Senate with Mike Gianaris, Democrat from Queens, and the majority side and it was, it was well I think that there was really a difference seemed, of opinion yeah. on, on that what um, uh, Senator Gianaris may have thought his interpretation <laughs> of the rules the Senate rules yeah, yeah, were yeah. or are and the, you okay. know he, he he was there needs to be a decorum and uh, an order in the chamber and I think that that's what Let they me brought ask about you something well just I just yeah. say with the Talmud because again we're in the Jewish view they're always arguing if you just even see a little bit of the Talmud but that doesn't mean you can't you know you debate come together you, know, you and have debate is healthy okay. yeah debate so is speaking good, of debate being healthy <laughs> and coming together and crossing party lines and all that uh, in 2010 Angelo Santa Barbara ran against you in the assembly and mm -hmm. you beat him Mm -hmm. How do you get along with him now that he's in the assembly and you're in the Senate? Do you co-sponsor bills together? Yeah, do you we get have, along? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have. We, matter of fact, uh, we did some bills together that uh, passed and got uh, the governor signed them in the law. So you waters under the bridge from that campaign? Absolutely. Look, it, it, I helped. I helped uh, Assemblyman Santa Barbara first get elected when he became ran for uh, county, leg county legislature mm -hmm. in, in Schenectady County. Um, How'd you help matter him? of fact, I, I, I went door to door with him. Really? Uh, I was on his, his mail pieces. I was so I let him use my logo. So for was it? my logo I used for my campaign, which was part of what my business logo is. Uh, let him use that back then as so well. Did, so did you feel like he was being ungrateful when he ran against you? Oh, believe me, I felt uh, disheartened and, and, and slighted, and, and I felt uh, there was a lot more that went on. Uh, with that, secretly recording our conversations mm -hmm. and things. But regardless of that, uh, you know, we should not hold a grudge. What, is, what, what does God even teach us? And, and the principles of that. And to me, that's more important an than eye for an our, eye. our, our, our short there somewhere time. there an eye for an eye? Well, yeah. <laughs> if I took an eye for an eye, what he was trying to do to me, and then I tried to do it to him, I'd be sitting in jail and not right here. Okay. Okay, so I, we can't do that today in today's society. So you're you fine. Along. I, along. I didn't know that story. I didn't know any of the story. I didn't know the background. I just thought I'd ask you. I just saw both yeah, names on there. and I just. You know what? He, so. he, he succeeded me when I right. was the assembly. Uh, and you left person. the assembly. I left the assembly, right. and then he ran for right. that office and won that office. So right. we have to work together. Everyone needs to work together. In order for a bill to get passed and you, sign into law. He doesn't have to be patted down before he comes in your office or anything to make sure he's uh, not I, I am very cautious to make sure <laughs> that uh, he is not secretly recording me and then try to alter the recordings That's and right. use it for his own advantage. <laughs> that, to me, doesn't speak of a lot of integrity and character of a person and not well. Like Nelson Castro from the Bronx, he was recording his fellow assembly members. And <laughs> that went on also. <laughs> now, but, but you know, no one knows who to uh, talk to anymore. You gotta be thick skin in this business, <laughs> and you gotta work with everyone in, this, in, in, uh, in government, and I do. So you like the new leadership? Uh, there was a change in the Republican conference? And yeah. I don't yeah. want to get into all the details. No, you can. Few, That's fine. No, we only have a few minutes left okay. or a few seconds, but 
you know, are you rising up in the seniority already? Uh, you're there if a that's few what months. you want to call it. <laughs> I, I, I am I'm dedicated on serving I'm, my constituents, yes, you are. and that's what I'm focused yes, on you doing. Are. And, and, you know, just a couple weeks ago, I was uh, awarded the Empowerment Award by, uh, by Rabbi uh, Heck uh -huh. in, uh, in, the city of King, in the city of Kingston. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. And, um, you know, it well, was great. On that. We thank you. <laughs> we we they had a, a wonderful gathering on a, a big event on it. It was over breakfast, and yeah. there was tons of people there. Um, I would and, have come down for that if I had any. Any. And, he, had known, I, so. and I was uh, very pleasantly surprised that uh, I won the empowerment award uh, from the whole. Uh, Gathering. There was many other award recipients yeah, but. Um, around the Kingston area, but it was great. And I have this beautiful um, Jewish clock mm -hmm. hanging in my office. Hopefully, it's and, not and, late and, all the time. Like a, and 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 he Jewish says, you know, and, and it's with Jewish time, right? <laughs> but he says, if next year, if you win, I'll give you the batteries for the clock. So oh. I, I got to work hard to get the batteries now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, listen, we're out of time, but you, we're wishing you a lot of success. You've done great work, and we look forward to even bigger success from you. And uh, you'll come and check in into Jewish View again. Absolutely, yeah, best thank of you success. So much. Yes.